Okay, my name is Roger Elam, and I'm being represented by Black Workers Matter. And we have a petition today with close to 50 signatures of uh, a company called Ferrera Pan Candy out in Bellwood. And we came across this petition because of the discrimination that's out there that's being portrayed on, in the whole job itself. And uh, a lot of people are being discriminated against. And I was one of the people that was discriminated against, and I came up with this petition. Um, I was caught in that situation because of the fact that I was a material mover and I was asked to do an assignment along with my other assignment because they were shorthanded by my lead person. And um, as I performed that job, she told me that this other guy would do part of my job so that I could do this assignment that she asked me to do. Six hours in the shift at 10 o'clock that night, she came to me and told me, well, you need to go back here and wrap all these pallets. And so I go take a look at the pallets, and it's about 30, 40 pallets back there. And I come back, I said, well, Zuli, we're six hours in the shift. That means that Roberto has not wrapped the pallets at all. Not, not one. She said, well, I need you to go wrap the pallets. I said, well, Zuli, I'm not refusing to work, but I will go back there and help him wrap the pallets along with the other assignment that you asked me to do. She, she said that I'm not going to make him wrap no pallets. I want you to go back to him. And I was DNI for insubordination. But, and, and, oh, so the, and, and so the rest of the jobs are all temped out, as I understand it, and most of the temp workers are black. That's correct. But very few, as I, as I understand it, very few of the temp workers are ever hired on as full time. That's also correct. We have a guy, and he's on this petition as well. His name is Martise Brown. He's been working as a material mover for three years as a temp. It's supposed to be 90 days temp to hire. 90 days temp to hire. Correct. Is, is a policy. Yes. And so we, we have people that have been working as temp workers, as you say now, for over three years in that one case. And other people have been there for uh, over a year, two years themselves, and that's sort of they, they keep coming back as as temp workers, and uh, the the policy hasn't been hiring from that temp pool. They, they, have, they have not. They've been hiring from the outside, and we I've seen a couple of occasions where Hispanics has come in. They might work. I don't know if they're working temps or whatever, but they get right hired. They'd be hired within 90 days. And like they, they, they're trying to say that Afro-American people can't do the job. They're trying to say that we're lazy. But we wasn't lazy until after slavery. <laughs> and that, that's, what, that's the way I see it. Black people did not become lazy until after slavery ended. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a point of fact that these temp, uh, temp workers the black temp workers keep coming back, so they can't be lazy. That's true. They come back. They're coming day. back under under uh, conditions that are less than favorable, but they still want the job. They still want still want to work. That's that's correct. So it can't be can't be a, a a question of being lazy. Now, also, I've I've heard of uh, language discrimination, in that. Uh, the temp workers are told that they have to be bilingual to get hired on. Is that is that correct? I've also heard that rumor. Um, I have so that that's been a rumor, but uh, it's it's widely widely discussed. Exactly, exactly. And the experience I have with that is that I have not seen them hire an Afro American tip worker from the pool. And these are people that comes back on the regular every day. I was there four months myself and wasn't hired. And I've seen Latinos, uh, Caucasians, they get hired within 90 days, or within that 90 days, even a month. I've seen one get hired within a month. I've seen one get hired directly off the street, didn't do a day or 10. And, and he was in shipping and receiving, he was a material mover as well. But you have qualified material movers who's been working the job. In the one case, Martise Brown for three years, I was there three months myself but they have not been hired in the company yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, the very first one that we're fighting is racial slurs. Now, in my own personal experience, like I said, there was this one Mexican 
every day he would he would speak. He say, "What's what's up, boy?" And I'm like, I don't know why he's calling me a boy. So one particular time, I said, "Look, my man, I'm a man. I'm not a boy, boy." You know. So th that's my experience with that. They 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 talk down to you as if you don't have any sense at all. It's like all black people are dumb. And they're trying to say that we can't do the job. And that's not right because we're there doing the job. Mm -hmm. Now this is supervisors, the way that they do, they address the temp workers. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard that uh, it's, it's different from the way that they address the, uh, the, the full-time workers. You know, outside of the language barrier. Outside the language barrier is correct because they treat their own far more better than they treat the Afro-American people. Mm -hmm. they, they, they stick together because they know that they have mouths to feed, but what they're not realizing is that we also have mouths to feed too. Sure. That's why we come there every day. Sure. And the, the, the second thing is discrimination in job assignments. Now, my experience with that, I'm a material mover. You see the Mexican people in the easy positions and the Afro-American people are put on the hard assignments. Well, dumping the candy, picking up 40 pound boxes, dumping them constantly into this big dumper, or palletizing, which the machines are turned up super high because they believe in numbers. Numbers injure people. When you don't have enough people to perform a job and you got the machine running high, you're, you're asking for injuries. I was out there and this one lady got her hand caught in the conveyor belt. And the maintenance people ran over and said, reverse the machine. No, don't reverse the machine. Cut the belt, ease the tension. I, I did maintenance at Tyson for two and a half years. And uh, they wanted to turn the machine in reverse to run our hand back through the machine. Mm. You're only going to cause more pain. Yeah. So I took a knife <clears throat> and cut the belt mm. to ease the tension. and I showing them what both to unscrew to let the level so she can get her hand out. But they got her hand out anyway. And mm -hmm. the, the next thing is racial enforcement and discipline. Now, my experience with that is, like I said, if, if we go on a break, we come back a minute late, it's like, oh, you're a minute late, I'm gonna have to talk to the supervisor, we'll be threatened to be sent home. Now, I have seen where some of my co-workers, the material movers, they go to break and they stay going to lunch hour, 45 minutes. They disappear. You don't see them for a long time. You know, but they said they're in the warehouse doing this or doing that. But, you know, the thing is, we all have a job to perform. And when you don't do your end, when you don't do your part of the job, that makes it harder on me. So that means I have to do my job plus yours. And you, and you feel that they're, they're harder on the, on the temp workers they're, they're more on on their case for uh, time discipline than the, the higher. Definitely, definitely, they're definitely out of the tip works because they're all Afro American, and they, like I said, they, they allow the Mexican people, which is maybe seventy five percent of the body, they they allow them to have more privileges than they allow the Afro American workers, which are most of the tip workers. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, discrimination and, and, and promotions. The temps, Afro-American people are just not promoted. They're not. You can get a temp, um, a Caucasian temp come in within 90 days. There, As a matter of fact, we was meeting at McDonald's and this one girl, she's only there like two months and she obviously told us that the company's been hired. She's being trained to be hired. Um, there are other people that was not Afro-American that was working temps, but they got hired within 90 days. And the Afro-American people are just not being hired, but they come there faithfully every day and work, perform a 12-hour shift five to six days a week, faithfully. But they're just not being promoted, they're not being hired as regular workers for free, for real. So they, they, they're demonstrating that they're doing the job. Every day. It's, it's not. A, it's not a question of can you do the job. You're coming back and doing the job every day. Every day the job is being done. The production it goes out. It goes out every day. So if the production is going out, that means the job is being done. So how could you say we can't do the job? You can't say we can't do the job. Even even in discipline and enforcement. I want to go back to that because I want to say an incident of a young lady 
that was working there, and she was told she couldn't go to the bathroom, and she actually urinated on herself mm. on the line. The embarrassment of doing that for, at a workplace, I can't even imagine that. But OSHA says you cannot regulate the, the amount of times or the, the time that a person goes to the bathroom because that person could have something going on that day or whatever. But they regulate when you go to the bathroom, how long you go, and if, you, if you've been gone a long time, they want to send you to the supervisor, threaten to send you home. But the Mexicans can go when they feel like it. But this young lady was told she couldn't go to the bathroom and she actually urinated on herself on the line. Mm. Afro-American, I have to say that. Okay, the, the next thing we're going to talk about is the hostile environment at Ferrer Pan. And when I, we say hostile, it's like, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to send you home. If you don't do what I say, you're going to be DNR. If you don't do what I say, you know, we don't want you to come back here anymore. Wow. I am so glad that God has initiated an organization such as Black Workers Matter that it was there for me. They're, they're here for me now, and I, I'm trying to be there for them by doing this video. But I am so glad that God has created an organization such as Black Workers Matter, because we do that. I tell them by word of mouth, and I'm there every time I can be there, because I told them, I'm gone, but I'm not gone. I'm gonna stay in their face. I'm not going, and I'm glad that Black Men Black Workers Matter is behind me. And they're behind me and I'm behind them. So you can get with us, you know, jump aboard, because the more people that get on board and say we matter, the more the upper people are gonna listen.